Tesla's full self-driving is really amazing. It does incredible things and drives really well. But one thing that I've noticed it definitely doesn't do, at least with the regular version that's out for the general public, is it doesn't plan ahead very far. Will Tesla's be able to do this in the future? Plus the Plaid Model S smashes a world record and SpaceX is chosen for what might be the most important space mission of all time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So before we get to the main story, let me first start with this incredible Plaid Model S world record run. Bang. That's the eighth mile, 5.895, gonna be close. 9.08 oh, oh, for the world record. Woo! So as you can see, the Model S Plaid did a 9.08 quarter mile, which is incredible, right? We're almost getting down to sub nine seconds, below 10 seconds. My wife and I, because Fast and Furious 9 is coming out, you know, we kind of went back and watched all the old Fast and Furious, and they always talk about, you know, the 10 second golden number, and it's like, well, it's sort of like, I guess the, uh, you know, back in the, was it the 50s or something, when everybody was talking about how the five minute mile was unsmashable, and now we're down to like the four minute mile or something, right? So that's human endeavor. Obviously, this is automotive endeavor, but it's pretty incredible that we're looking at almost a full second below the 10 second mark now. It's it's just amazing. So anyway, congrats to Tesla on producing such an amazing car. If anybody in the Atlanta area gets one soon, please let me know. I would love to take a ride with you. <laughs> I will do a whole episode just on riding with you in your Plaid Model S. So you get featured on the Dr. Know-It-All channel if that matters to you whatsoever. But anyway, definitely let me know. I, I really want to take a ride in this. And I don't know, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to feel like my Model Y is like an old slowpoke buggy after driving in a Plaid Model S. But anyway, I'll take that chance. I would love to go ride in one. And the other news item that's just breaking is that SpaceX is going to be launching the Europa Clipper mission in October of 2024 on one of their Falcon Heavy rockets. Now, I know some people are immediately going to say, hey, why don't they use the Starship and the Super Heavy and all that stuff? And yes, they could. But you got to remember that this is uh, perhaps one of the most important missions ever. Uh, the deal with the Europa Clipper, if any Anybody doesn't know is it's going to Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter. And due to tidal forces with Jupiter and it orbiting it in an elliptical orbit, it's kind of squashed and stretched. So it has a huge underground or under ice ocean. And there are geysers that come up off of this ocean and allow, you know, spacecraft to actually fly through them. So potentially the Europa Clipper, I think it's going to do 45 um, orbits of, of Europa, getting as close as 16 miles. So I think that's about 25 kilometers. I don't know why NASA still uses miles. <laughs> Guys. You need to go over to metric here. But anyway, uh, it's going to get very, very close, and these plumes go out into space about 100 miles or 160 kilometers. So it could easily fly through these plumes, and it's going to have detectors on it, which will allow it to sample things like organics and stuff. Europa is probably the best chance in the solar system of extraterrestrial life, and it could be under the surface. And these geysers could, of course, you know, be throwing organics and other things out into the solar system from the vents. And so if the Europa Clipper is able to fly through these and sample them, it could actually give a very high degree of confidence that there's life off of planet Earth, which is why I'm saying it could could be the most important mission ever launched by NASA. It could be that important. So huge kudos to NASA for selecting SpaceX and of course for SpaceX for having the Falcon Heavy and being able to launch it. By the way, as opposed to the SLS, which is not really flying right now yet, it looks like the Falcon Heavy might save NASA $2 billion for the launch. So that is a pretty big savings and I'm a taxpayer in the United States, so I really appreciate that. So thank you to everybody and you know, here's best of luck. I know it's three years away still right now, but I can't wait for this mission. I, I'm just super excited about it. And yes, it's going to take forever because it takes like, I think four years after launch before it gets to Jupiter. So, you know, we're talking about the end of this decade before anything's going to come back. But this is going to be really, really big news. And it's going to be a huge potential for basically a consciousness changing potential, right? It could change it from we are the only life in the universe to there is life, other life in the solar system itself. So it could be huge news. So on to the main topic at hand. Mitzel, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He's a Mexican on Twitter is his handle. Anyway, he asked me a really, really good question 
question, so I'm just going to go ahead and read his tweet to me. Do you know if Tesla AI will be smart enough to make smart decisions? Example, I have quite often on the highway, it needs to move over one lane. It was until it's 0.5 miles or less. However, many times there's a set of cars that are slower and piles up, but the car still keeps going fast and then it tries to merge. As a human driver, you can see it would be beneficial at that point to merge at one mile instead of trying to cut it at 0.5 miles or less with a lower chance of merging successfully. I then answered this tweet. Thus far with the non-beta version of FSD, the answer is no. It will try to merge at bad times and either break hard or I have to take over. I can't speak to the beta, but from videos it doesn't appear too much better. The trouble is that this is somewhere around 30 seconds of advanced planning and that requires massive memory and a huge neural network. I have an idea how to solve this, but it's a bit of a secret. But for Tesla to really drive like a human, this type of planning is necessary. So let's break this down a little bit. What is Mitsail asking about? Okay, so think about this. As a human driver, you're on the highway and you have to get off an exit. And let's say you're, there's two lanes, right? And it's a right-hand driving system because that's what I'm used to. So anyway, there's a lane here where there's some traffic and you're in the left-hand lane and the exit is to the right. So what you do is you get somewhere, you know, depending on how hard the traffic is and how many lanes you have to get over, let's say somewhere around a mile or one and a half kilometers from the exit, you think to yourself like, okay, I'm going to need to get off at this exit in a period of time. And if you're driving, let's just say 60 miles an hour and it's one mile, that's, you know, one minute, right? That makes it nice and easy. So you have about one minute's sort of advanced warning about this. So you think to yourself at one mile, you look at the traffic and you think, okay, is it gonna be a real big pain to move over this one lane so that I can exit somewhere in the next mile? If it's empty, of course, you just do it whenever you want. But if there's a whole bunch of traffic in front of you, then maybe the ideal time is right now. Or of course, alternatively, you may see a relatively slow car in the right lane and you may go like, oh, I can easily pass that person and there's a big gap in front of them and so I can go in front. So all of this is pre-planning at the somewhere between 30 second and one minute mark, right? You're planning ahead. You're saying in this amount of time, I need to get over and now I need to do this. So simple enough for a human being, right? So why is this difficult for a car to do? Well, let's think about this for a second. As Dr. Carpathy talked about in his CVPR21 videos, and I've got my reviews of those up there, and I talk about this at more length, Teslas are working at about 36 frames per second right now, right? So every second of motion of the car is 36 frames. It's eight cameras. Each of those cameras is running at 720p. So it's a huge amount of data. And by the way, each one of the pixels in the 720p cameras, you've got eight of them and it's 1280 by 720. I can't multiply that out. It's three colors also. So I'll multiply it out and I'll put it below here. Anyway, it's a really, really big number for every single frame. And you've got 36 of those per second. So this takes a huge amount of memory and a huge amount of processing power for it to just process one second's worth of data. And and it appears to me that the full self-driving beta is processing somewhere around one to two seconds of data as a window, right? So it's moving this one to two second data thing. Again, I don't have any of this insider information because of course I don't work for Tesla. If anybody from Tesla wants to talk to me about this, I would love to have you know, more accurate numbers to put to all of this. So again, this episode is speculation. This is the best that I can see from looking at what I'm observing obviously don't have access to the code and I don't know the internals of this, but this is what I can see. So my guess is they've got a one to two second sliding window that they're looking at, right? So that means that the car, like the GPS can plan ahead, right? It can go like, I have to get off at this exit in one mile. And you see that even in the non-beta version of the software, when you get to like one mile away, it'll pop up a little blue thing that says upcoming lane change to make an exit, right? So it's, it tells you that it's going to do that. So the GPS navigation is telling it, yep, I need to make an exit up here at some point. But what it's not able to do is it's not able to look at the traffic situation and it's not able to say to itself, how am I going to get most effectively merge into the right lane, the far right lane, so that I can get off at this exit. Of course, it's a little bit more rare, but this can obviously also happen if there's like a, a traffic situation like construction or something where they close the right lane and you're in the right lane and it says like, you know, in one mile, the right lane is gonna close and so it has to move over. So these are the kinds of things that don't take one to two second planning, they take 30 to 60 second planning. And that is a huge difference between a full self-driving computer and a human computer, a human driver, right? A human driver 
driver because of experience, right? If you're an inexperienced driver, you're like, oh no, I'm messing, you know, you don't plan ahead that far. But as you gain experience, you learn to think ahead 30 to 60 seconds so that you're thinking about these things and you're, you know, trying to make this as smooth as possible and not create any kind of emergent situations that could cause problems. And this, by the way, is kind of a the way of seeing like a new driver versus an older driver, right? A new driver doesn't plan ahead like this, an older driver does. So when I talk about like, you know, Tesla's full self-driving feeling like it's a student driver in its first couple of weeks of driving, that's what it feels like, right? It's not making plans far enough ahead so that it can avoid these emergent situations. And that's a poor thing and it needs to be improved. But of course, the basic reason why it can't be improved easily is because of memory and time constraints. These are huge problems. It's a massive memory and processing issue to process just one or two seconds of information. It's, you know, it, with the hardware and software available now, it's basically impossible for it to do, say, 30 seconds of information. So it would be incredibly difficult for it to take its current neural network processing and models that it's using for its very, very brief window planning ahead. And this is really important, right? You don't want to crash into things and you want to make sure you're safe from other cars. So this is critically important. It's more important than the other driving because it keeps you from getting into an accident. But the other driving can help you keep from being in a situation where you can cause emergency situations and you can cause situations where things start to you know stack up. I always talk about accidents having at least two proximate causes, right? So the, the first cause of that might be that you didn't plan ahead far enough and so you have to make an emergency lane switch into the right lane in order to get off on that exit. And then the second cause could be something like the person in front of you breaks really hard right at that exact same moment. Or somebody decides to uh, you know merge out of the exit, like they're starting to get off the exit and then they decide against that or something, right? So there's almost always two reasons, two causes for an accident. But one of those causes definitely can be not planning ahead because if you're already in that right lane and you're already set up for the exit, you've taken away one of those proximate causes for the accident. So it's really important. It's not as important as the second by second thing, right? Because you have to make sure that you're staying away from the other car second by second. But you can create a situation where you don't get into an emergency situation simply by planning ahead. So this is definitely secondary and it's definitely, I would say, difficult to impossible to do with the current hardware and software and the current neural network models. But I actually have a solution to this problem. And if you thought I was gonna tell you here, I'm sorry, I'm not going to. <laughs> if, if anybody from Tesla wants to know, I will tell you guys, but I'm keeping it a bit of a secret for, for now. But anyway, I do have an idea and I have a solution to this problem, but I think it's really, really interesting that Mitzel talked about this. This is something that I talk about all the time too. I mean, we can even go to more minor things where the car will react to slower cars up ahead and try to move into the passing lane to get around them, which is really, really valuable, of course. But what it's not doing is it's not looking behind itself and it's not looking ahead of itself to see the fact that there's somebody moving up quickly in the left lane as you're driving in the right lane and there's a slow car ahead of you. And a lot of times you can tell say 15 or 20 seconds ahead of time that you're going to have to make this move to get around. Whereas the Tesla doesn't make that decision fast enough. It makes it at the very last minute where it's gonna have to slow down if it doesn't get out. And if you had made that decision earlier, you could have pulled out, gone around and gotten back in again before the person behind you even got there. And so again, it's driving like a dumb driver or a not good driver or a not experienced driver. It's not driving like a really good human driver. And so it really is, you know, it's secondarily important to the second by second driving, but it is really important to good driving. And so it needs to be solved. And it's a really complicated problem because of the processing and memory issues involved in thinking about 30 to 60 seconds as opposed to second by second. So anyway, really good question. Again, this is just speculation on my part at this point. If somebody from Tesla wants to talk to me about this, I would be very happy to talk to them about it. We could do a YouTube video about it, you know, and get more detailed. It would be super, super cool. So definitely let me know if you have more insight in this issue. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and enjoyable. And I mean, the fact that the Plaid Model S is breaking world records, the Falcon Heavy is going to be launching an incredibly important mission in a couple of years, as well as this really interesting issue with Teslas and full self-driving and planning ahead. This is really cool stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely like it so other people people can find it and consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for the support. I really do appreciate it so much. And if you want to join the team, the link is
link is in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics as the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a power wall, etc., or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.